Greetings and welcome to Beneath the Soil. I'm Simka Weinstein, Director of Marketing at Alberts Organics. In today's discussion, I'd like to focus on frequently asked questions about organic foods and about the organic industry. Specifically, I'd like to look at some of the broader, larger questions that customers are apt to ask retailers during their shopping experience. Your ability to accurately answer these questions will help you not only as you look to sell and promote organic foods, but as you look to sell and promote the integrity of the organic industry. Now a list of frequently asked questions could be pretty large and pretty extensive, so I've narrowed it down to four questions. And in no specific order, these four questions are, one, how do we know that the food in the store is legitimately organically grown? How do we know that if it's labeled organic, it really is organic? Two, is organic foods more nutritious? Is it healthier for me? Three, does it taste better? Do organic foods have more flavor than their conventional counterparts? And four, why does organic food cost more? Why does it cost so much more at the register? So I'd like to take a closer look at these questions in more detail. So the first question, how do we know that the food is organically grown in your store? How do we know that because it's labeled organically grown that we can trust that it actually is organically grown? This is a huge question. What makes this question somewhat easy to answer is what happened October 21st, 2002. That's when the organic standards became official. That's when they became law. And basically what this says is, is that any food that's going to be labeled or sold as organic must go through the certification process. And this certification process must be verified by a state agency or a private agency that can certify and is approved by the USDA. That is the short answer to this question. Now prior to the National Organic Standards, you could actually call product that wasn't certified, you could actually call it organic. Perhaps you had a history with the grower, perhaps you had visited the farm, and there was a, an, an element of trust between the retailer and the grower, and between the retailer and the consumer. But over time, what began to happen was, was that consumers wanted verification. Consumers wanted to know that there is a uniform standard, a uniform target that we're reaching to that defines what organic is. And that's what the standards did in 2002. And that's how we can say that the food in our stores are organic because they meet the standards as put forth by the National Organic Program in 2002. Now the second question is, are organic foods healthier? Are, do they have more nutritional value than their conventional counterparts? Now, to a degree, there's a little bit of semantics involved in this. For example, if we're truly just going to look at the nutritional content, then technically we cannot say that organic food is more nutritional than conventional food. And by nutritional content, we mean looking at the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the proteins that are in the food. There have been hundreds of studies in the past 20 years comparing organic foods and comparing conventional foods in this capacity and in many ways it comes out a wash. For the most part there's no decisive evidence that says that organic foods have a higher nutritional content than conventional foods. But if you're going to take the broader picture and say are they healthier, well then we have a completely different story because if we're going to look at health we're going to look at far more than just the nutritional content of the product, we also are going to take into account inputs that have gone into the growing process of the food. And when we do that, then we have to take a look at chemical fertilizers, chemical pesticides, chemical growth promotants that have gone into the food. 
And we look at it that way, without question, organic food is far more healthier for you than the conventional counterpart because it doesn't have these added inputs. Perhaps one way to look at it, an easy example would be to say, if you remember last summer, the BP oil spill down off the Gulf off of uh, Louisiana, and imagine that you had just caught a crab that came off of that Gulf Coast, and you compared the nutritional content of that crab to a crab that was caught off the coast of Maryland. My guess is that in a study, just the nutritional content of these two would match up pretty well. They'd be pretty similar. But what we wouldn't be taking into account is the oil that had gotten into that crab, the dispersants that were put into the water that became part of that crab. In that way, you could hardly compare the two, and I doubt that anyone would want to eat the crab that came from the Louisiana coast over the crab that came from the Maryland coast. Very similar when we look at the impact that pesticides and herbicides and fertilizers have had on our food. Those inputs have to be taken into account as we look at the health of our food. And so in this way, yes, organic food is far better for you than the conventional counterpart. So the third question has to do with flavor. Does organic food have more flavor? Does it taste better than its conventional counterpart? Now I wish I could sit here and make this, this question have the shortest answer by simply saying, yes, it does. But that wouldn't be entirely accurate. There has never really been a formal study comparing the flavor of organic food with the flavor of conventional food. We do have a lot of anecdotal evidence, however. If you talk to chefs and food experts, they typically provide a very strong endorsement for the flavor of organic food over the flavor of conventional food. And typically what they say is it's because of the soil that is used in raising organic foods. And as we know, organic growers really enrich the soil. Lots of nutrient buildup in that soil. And if you have healthy soil, you're going to have healthy plants. If you have healthy plants, you're going to have healthy food. And typically healthy food has great flavor. That's simply how it works. And that's a great thing. If there's anything that comes close to uh, uh, data or, or, or accurate evidence, it would be a survey done by the National Restaurant Association. And in this survey, 50% of restaurants that had a per person dinner check of $25 or more, they used and preferred organically grown foods. That's a pretty strong statement. And so while we can't really say with evidence that organically grown foods taste better than their conventional counterparts, we certainly have a lot of endorsements. And I think comfortably we can say that typically, and as a general rule, when you have food that is grown in a healthful manner, it tends to have a better flavor. So our fourth question is, why does organic food cost more? Why is it higher than conventionally grown food? Much like our first question, this is a huge question. This is a very common question and one that, that we get quite a bit. And while we could do an entire video, an entire discussion just on this topic alone, what I want to do is focus just on two aspects, two areas that I think are very important and very critical for why organic foods cost more to produce than their conventional counterparts. First thing I want to take a look at is just how the crops are grown. Conventional farms are able to maximize every square inch of their farm. They treat the soil, they don't have to rotate crops. Every year, because of the chemical inputs that they put into the soil, they're able to grow their best cash crops in the same place, maximizing their space year in and year out. Organic farmers, on the other hand, that's not how they farm. They will typically sacrifice a segment 
of their acreage to grow a cover crop, to plow it in. It would be wrong to say they're not maximizing their land. They're very much maximizing their land. What they're doing is they're creating a far more sustainable type of growing system. They're taking care of the environment. They're taking care of the soil. They're creating a sustainable farming system. But by doing this, they also have less yield. And when you have less yield, that affects the price of food. That will definitely have your food costing more than somebody who is able to get a stronger yield. Now, the second area that I'd like to look at, and this is a very, very big deal, is farm subsidies. In 2009, conventional farmers got $15.4 billion in farm subsidies. Organic growers, $15 million. Before you pull out your calculator, I'll do the math for you. Conventional farmers got 1,000 times more money than organic growers. And again, what this does is it gives a distorted view, a distorted reality of how much it really costs to grow the food. If there was a level playing field, if either they both got the same subsidies or neither organic nor conventional growers got any subsidies, then conventionally grown food would go up in price. It wouldn't have the benefit of being artificially deflated because of those subsidies. So as it stands now, until, until there's kind of a, a balance in how our food is grown and how we subsidize money to different growers, this, this gap in food will remain. And typically on the retail level, on average we see that organic foods tend to be 20 to 25 percent higher. And that's just in cost. But if you really, really want to help your customers, steer them away from looking at this issue as an issue of cost and help them understand that it's really a matter of value. And when you look at value instead of cost, then suddenly and differently, organic foods look like a much, much, much better value, particularly when we look at what kind of sustainable future it presents as far as a food system. So one of the wonderful things about shoppers of organic foods is that they're intelligent. And not only are they intelligent, but they're curious, they're inquisitive, they like to ask questions. And this is a good thing. We should want them to ask questions. Not only should we want them to ask questions, we should even encourage them to challenge us. The key on our end is to be prepared. We must be armed with information. We must be armed with accurate and effective information. And so to that end, I hope that this video was helpful. And until next time, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and be well.